Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who register through the library calendar can pick up their material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is a collage canvas. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. So again, this month we're in a gallon bag. Uh, we have got a small uh, two ounce cup of Mod Podge. It is the gloss. Um, and I did put them in a little snack bag just so hopefully um, as you got them home, there wasn't any spillage of the podge. Uh, foam brush. We have our little six by six canvas. Um, and then you have a selection of papers um, and stickers and different kind of fun stuff. So I did find these little clear kind of um, firework type stickers. We have this larger piece of black kind of fishnet mesh um, that was really fun. There is also a smaller piece of mesh that has a little bit of something to it. We'll give a little bit of a dimensional aspect to our project. Um, we've got a couple of pieces of just some patterned rice paper, some patterned um, scrapbook paper, some solid colors, some more rice paper that has that like real strong veining in it that should look pretty cool. Um, I also included, and it looks like I only got one of them here in this kit, um, some paste paper uh, that I had actually completed at a um, Austin Book Arts Center class that I thought was really fun. Um, so something like that that you've painted on is great for this project. We have some other textured, um, almost cardstock type paper. Another very thin rice paper that's going to be great on top of things. Um, you'll have a piece of mesh, two of these uh, metallic papers, um, and then half a sheet out of a dictionary. So I thought this was a fun one for this collage because maybe you'll find a word on here or some stuff that you might want to include in your project. And then a long piece of a uh, sheet music. Again, I thought this would be a really cool kind of, as you could see, some of the music between papers. Um, so in addition to what's in the kit, you may want to bring out a pair of scissors if you like some straighter, cleaner lines uh, on your material. A lot of this stuff we are also going to be able to tear. Um, if you've got any paints left over from previous canvas projects or that you just have around, you might want to bring those out. I brought a brush with that. Um, and actually, I'm going to water my paints down when I um, apply. So I did bring just the smallest amount of water to add some paint to. Um, also, if you've got other papers, so we provided a supply, um, but you might have other rice papers or tissue paper that have fun little things in them. Um, this was actually out of a Dollar Tree uh, paper pack that they had there, and it's kind of a textured, a little bit thicker paper. Um, this one just has, it's a mesh, but it's got a bit of a... Um, not quite 3D, but just a little bit of a color to it that I thought was kind of cool. Um, and then this one is just a little sky pattern that we've used in uh, previous crafts and was just kind of sitting around here in the lab. So um, really your first step is going to be design. So you're going to decide what of what we've provided you might want to use or what um, you've got around your house that you might want to use. And really that first step begins before we get to the glue and that'll give us a sense of what we want our project to look like and i do love the music so i'm just kind of measuring out because i want this to be kind of my base so i'm going to cut pretty close to center there and then i can put the music on the back and then just kind of looking at the two sides of my paper to see which ones I like more and actually I think I might go strips because it's a little bit more than I really need so I can really go and just do I really need? Oh, right about there. 
overlapping will be fine because then that will give me a little bit of hold between the three pieces of paper. So I'm going to go with music on the bottom. Um, I do have, so I got knickknack, need, kind, kickoff, kid, keen. Oh, keen might be fun, but I think I'm going to go with kind and I'm going to just kind of come through here and not really even cut a straight. And I'm going to put that kind of right in the center. And now I may change the layers of that later um, with some of these papers. So when you tear a paper, um, if I tear towards me on something like this that has a white core, I'm going to get that where I can see some of that white color from underneath. So that's tearing towards me. If I'm going to tear away, if I don't want to see that white, I just want the purple itself, I'm going to tear backwards away from me and I have way less of that white core showing. So there's, that gives me kind of a, a cool little um, shape right there. I'm going to kind of wrap that around, I think. Come over here with that. Definitely want to incorporate my paste paper. This was um, a stamp on top of that removed some of the um, ink paint that we were using. I'm going to slide that. Actually, I want to make that a little bit smaller. I don't need quite all of that because I want, I do want my music to show through in, in different parts. Um, let's see. I think one of my mesh here. Come through with that. Let's see. I'm going to bring this guy down here a little ways. Yeah. And go right over top of that with that mesh. I've got this really fun bring this to my other corner i think actually i'll put it over so i see some of that purple popping through um, let's see what else have i got oh i do love this little cactus paper um, i think i'm gonna go in a little bit of a diagonal with this and just kind of Pull out the two little guys I've got. Um, I think right about here, that'll be good. Oh yeah. Uh, want one of these kind of lighter colored rice papers, mulberry papers that have the veining in them because I think that when I paste it down, yeah, you'll be able to see through it will clear up a little bit and we'll be able to see that um, music notes right through it um, so I've got my little stickers they're gonna need to be oh yeah that'll be good right there just kind of keep that and then actually I may go kind of right across with that um, but I do want something right up in here. I have this little tissue. Oh, my colors are a little off there. How's this with the browns in? No, oh, I want something. Oh, this. This will pick up kind of the gold and the sparkle there. Let's see. Do I want to tear this? Do I want to cut it? Maybe this is what I'll try adding in with this my little paint wash too, to see how that'll turn out. So I'm gonna bring, I'm just gonna slide this up here for a moment. Pull off my little extra pieces. And this is from last month's Canvas project. I've got some blues in there I really like. So I've got a little bit of this blue here that was kind of a shiny iridescent to it. And that's what I'm gonna pull out and mix with my water. I just really want a wash, so not a full coating of paint, just very much watered down coverage. And I'm hoping on this white textured paper, 
it will really sink down into that texture and pull out the colors. Let's see what we get here. And I've just got a um, kind of extra paper here so that I'm not getting paint on my table. If I um, had could have also covered my space, but since this is the only paint portion of this project, I decided I didn't really need to go that far. Oh yeah, that definitely pulls out the texture of the paper. You can kind of see the wave there as the paint kind of takes to. So I'm going to let that one set that one aside, let it kind of dry out a little. And now I'm just going to get a little experimental. This is just extra paint. So I'm not not already set aside for a project. Mix some purple in there. Still pretty liquidy. Come across this guy. Do some stripes. Because the pattern on this is very um, brush stroke kind of. Oh yeah. So that where it takes the color on the gold versus how it takes the color on the tissue behind it. Very cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that one. All right. So just a little bit of paint just to throw something else in there. Um, this is actually uh, similar to a project that uh, several of us completed while we were um, at an event called Crafters Con. And it was a teacher uh, from little bits of Mona who showed us this project and so it was definitely something once I tried it I wanted to bring to you all in a canvas project because it was just so much fun and really you kind of just throw your creativity at it um, it is always going to look amazing by the end no matter what you decide or how you choose to place your material onto the canvas which is one of the things I love about this um, so now that I've kind of got my setup and we're at 12 minutes I'm going to go ahead and start podging. Very likely this will be one that you'll want to do in kind of layers. So you'll come back to your project after maybe give it a little time to dry. Or if you've got a um, hair dryer handy, you can always use that to um, kind of dry out. I would not recommend the highest setting, probably one of the lower settings. So I'm just going to lay a real thin layer of podge onto my canvas so that when I put my first layer of papers down, we get some adherence. Set that aside. I could also add that to the paper itself, and I will on some of the other layers. This guy was over here. Just using my finger to burnish to make sure the paper is stuck to the canvas. And here, I'm going to go over the edges a little bit of the two I've already got put down so that when I put this middle one down, it's got a little bit of something to hold on to. Um, I'm putting my making sure my stanzas kind of don't quite line up because I really like that look. All right, again, just making sure that's adhered. So I think you can see that the edge of this paper isn't quite sticking, so I'm just going to come underneath it if you need to. But with your extra layers, the layers we're going to put on top, you won't have too much trouble with everything sticking, hopefully. Just getting what's on the foam brush onto there and then now I'm going to put my lower corner and this I'm actually going to put the podge directly onto my paper because I didn't put any around the corner and I want this edge to go over so I'm going to make sure it's got a lot on it and as I podge it my paper is getting a little bit wavier which is totally fine a little bit more pliable I'm here at the edge. And I'm just going to smooth up and out and then down around the side of my canvas here. 
smoothing. Wonderful. All right, and this one for this other corner, I'm just going to put over. And uh, hopefully you've worked with Mod Podge before. You know that, yes, it's probably going to show white on your material right off the bat, but it will dry clear, and so you won't really see that through there. And I wanted to put my word right here in the middle. Uh, you can also do kind of that wash effect um, that I did on my papers over here uh, using the paint directly onto the canvas itself. Um, so that may be something you want to do at the end. Kind of really just going to lay some thin layers. You'll see I'm doing very thin layers of the Mod Podge on top. And when I would get this completely done as I wanted with my material set, I would give it about a day to dry, come back, you should have enough podge left over uh, that you'll be able to do a final um, coat just to really seal everything in there. And then that way, wherever you set it, it should be fine to just be set there. Um, some of these papers that might be a little bit more delicate, um, you're going to want to try with more of a daubing technique. So most, most of what you're seeing is me brushing, um, but right now, because this is that really thin, I'm just going to daub over it to make sure it stays. And this was my gold leafed rice paper. And yes, as I expected, coating it really gets you to be able to see the music through it with just those extra little pieces. There's my mesh. Let's put a little bit of that on. I really want this to highlight that word. So let's go this way. Yeah, there we go. And, you know, if some little piece of what you're doing moves as you're doing it, then, you know, maybe it was just meant to be in that other spot, right? But with while things are kind of damp, you should be able to gently kind of peel up and decide if, yes, you do want your piece there or you want it to be elsewhere. All right, we are getting to a pretty extensive video, so I'm going to go ahead and trim us up here. As always, we love to see what it is you make for your Canvas projects. Share, tag the library, um, and we look forward to seeing you at next month's Canvas projects. Thanks for watching.